Good afternoon, and it is Leanne Antoine from Distinct Physiotherapy right here on Jack Chew's Chew It Over. Um, I'm so pleased to have you back on what is my second show. I am here every second Tuesday uh, of the month, uh, privileged to, to take this platform and have some awesome conversations. Um, just in terms of getting you all engaged, I would love to know, and if you could pop it in the chat, um, section. Just let us know where you're listening in from, where you're watching from. It'd be great to know who it is that we're attracting on these shows, where you're coming from, and also then really throwing you and keeping you engaged in terms of you asking us some questions and us really getting that out there to our guests. Now, as my shows are only on every um, second Tuesday, it's once a month, I feel like I'm chasing things a little bit. So things arise and I think, oh, I want to talk about that now. Uh, right now and then I'm not on for another three weeks I would um and that may well be that the way that things go but at the time uh, when I asked this lovely person to come onto the show with me there there was and have been some issues within physiotherapy that I think some of us are really tackling in the public eye and I'm really proud of the way that physiotherapy as a whole is handling this particular matter so today's show is about physiotherapy in the public eye. And I've brought on with me Ashley James, um, who is um, the national clinical lead uh, of education for Connect Health. He is chilled out, laid back, but his opinions and his values are, are one that I think that we hold very highly within our physiotherapy profession. So without further ado, I will be bringing uh, Ashley onto the, to the stage of the platform. Hello. Hi, how are you doing? I'm not too bad at all. Not, I don't think I've ever been described as chilled out before, but I like it. I'll take it. <laughs> well, in the interactions that we've had, <laughs> I, I have, that's how I have found that you have, have come across. And I think, um, actually, even if we're not chilled out as people, I think by nature, being able to, to have that ability for our patients is, is quite positive. And, and you have, a, you have a, a national role. So there's no way you could be taking on uh, such responsibility without um, without being relatively chilled and being able to make some constructive decisions. Would I be right in saying that? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I, I am pretty. I'd like to think I'm pretty calm, pretty calm and collected. Yeah. <laughs> um, one of the reasons, I mean, one of the, the triggers, I suppose, that, that brought me in, brought encouraged me to ask you to join me, was we had contributed to an article, um, and and interestingly. It was not like we had collaborated before that article went out. So yeah. it wasn't like we got to hear your version and then my version, uh, and then did we agree or not agree? Literally, I have an independent conversation with a journalist. You have an independent conversation with a journalist, and that journalist goes away and forms this article out of you know what is maybe twenty or thirty minutes conversation with me, and possibly twenty thirty minutes conversation with you. What I really want to draw on is what you think um, has been pivotal for us making an appearance as physios, as a profession, in the public eye, so these publications being on the news. What do you think that is currently doing for us as a profession? Yeah, I think on the whole, it's up, you know, it is absolutely positive. Um, but it's, you know, it's always about getting the right people. And, and when I say the right people, um, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm really passionate about public health um, and, and evidence based practice. So for me, it's really important that we put the people that are going to be champions of those things in the public eye for it to be a positive thing. And I, I know we've spoken before and the way that you've described there, how we often work in the media is is very true. So I'll have an independent conversation. Uh, someone else will have an independent conversation. And, I, and I've actually in the past and, and obviously not in our article. Um, when I first started, what I found was often what would happen is I would give my 20, 30 minutes and they would use maybe two or three lines from that in, in what I'd said. But it would be thrown in the mix with, you know, lots of other professions, lots of other people. And right. the, the overall message that came out, in my opinion, for the public was very confusing. And, and I don't feel like that's particularly helpful overall. So what I do much more often now is is ask the journalist who else is collaborating and, and try and get a sense for 
what the angle is of that media story so that if it's going to be kind of me versus someone else and they're trying they what they the term they often use is they're trying to balance views so they're trying yeah. to get two opposing views so they so the journalist in it in all fairness feels like they're getting a, a nice balanced overview of what that issue might be but actually what that ends up being is just mixed messages for the patient or the reader or the, the person reading that and and not on the whole helpful so i try and now collaborate um on media pieces or get involved in media pieces where i know that everyone involved is buying into the same message and and overall even though we might say slightly different things um the overarching message is the same and i think that's what those types of messages are really positive to have in the media because the reader goes away or the consumer of that media goes away with a real clear message from a group of professionals all saying the same thing which is much different from a group of professionals saying different things just to be have a balanced view so um, i think physios in the media is is on the whole very positive uh, and it will continue to be if we do it in the right way. And, and and in my opinion, that is the direction that we we should be going. Um, I think topically, um, obviously at the moment, there's been some really good exposure. And the CSP, John Ryan's team have really highlighted the brilliant work some of the, the physios have been doing on the front lines during COVID. And I think the more that that's referred to, the better, you know, the more people see and obviously doctors and nurses have done an outstanding job in, in all situations, but the NHS isn't just doctors and nurses. You know, there's there's a great group of allied health professionals and, and non-clinical staff members that have contributed to the COVID effort. And, and, and if we can recognise that more often, you know, people like Rachel Moses have been brilliant in the media, um, you know, getting yeah. the voice out yeah. for physiotherapy. So, yeah, I think more of that is great. Um, and, and, and how we do it is key, I think. I feel like, I mean, you, you've drawn on quite a few things there, and I almost wish I was, you know, take, taking more notes as, as we went, but but still wanting to, to keep track of what you're saying. But fundamentally, there are a few things. So firstly, you know, this this ethos, this value, and, and for me, just as who I am, you know, and I say to people all the time, like, how you meet me on screen is how I am off, off screen. I'm the same person. And I think how we show up in one place is exactly how we show up in another. So if your values around certain topics um, you know, are not necessarily cohesive or there's things that are a bit dysfunctional in that and then you're contributing to a piece that's going to be viewed by 6.6k people or whatever it is, there's a, there's a definite issue with that. And I think that there's it's the consistent nature then of why certain journalists will use recurring person because obviously then you you ended up after that on the, the bbc click show the consistency of your message then gives the journalist some direction i know that there's a like prima magazine or technical magazines that i've i've been referred to and they come back time and time again because i'm consistent you know? my message doesn't suddenly change based on what's happening in our society or, or in our world and if it does change it's relatively it's relative to that circumstance and situation and I think that's important you know the classic topic with working from home and the BBC article uh, with back pain and COVID was you know there was lots of talk about you know the fact that we didn't nobody said the word posture nobody said the word posture oh my god nobody said the word posture and I think that <laughs> there was lots of noise about that on Twitter but I think that within that and probably because of the way we work I can't speak for exactly how you work but it's about applying tasks to people that are, that they can functionally apply to their day-to-day -day life. And for me, and I'm not dismissing, you know, the educational component. Of it. I mean, you're you're a clinical lead and, and doing your your PhD, but but we have to be able to transfer that sweet information that is the research to the practical implementation for the end user, which is our patients. And if we can't do that well, the, the research cannot stand on its own, it, it, especially if it's not being applied. It's, it's, it's almost becomes quite redundant in a sense. This stuff has to make sense to our, our patients. And actually, I probably challenge journalists who are thinking about publishing in the health space that were controversial. Because actually, at the end, what does that end user really go away with? The other yeah, thing is, sorry, yeah, go on. No, I, I think it's a really, really important point to make in that we, we've got to make our messages palatable. And I think 
particularly in the MSK space, uh, and, and certainly on the things that I talk about, um, mainly around back pain, work, um, you know, neck pain, the, the, the historical kind of media exposure to those things is always about quick fixes, you know, this miracle back pain mm -hmm. cure, miracle mm -hmm. pain mm -hmm. cure. That, that's the kind of stuff that's been in the media and kind of gets headlines. And I think what we struggle with as evidence-based practitioners is how do we make moving regularly, making sure you know, we're, we're generally healthy, doing a bit of exercise, how do we make that interesting? Um, and I think that's why it's important to get the right people in front of the media. It's not about people who can regurgitate the research or, or people who can um, – might be excellent in front of patients um, and, and excellent clinicians, but when it comes to translating that message, um, you know, in an interview, struggle to do that. So you're absolutely right. It's about getting that message right so it's meaningful. For, and, and that's why I've, you know, said I'm not doing some articles because I think that confusing message doesn't help. For me, the, the message that needs to come out of every media piece needs to be clear and palatable by the individual. And, and it always amazes me that actually, what I am saying does come across as controversial sometimes that, you know, posture doesn't necessarily matter that much and movement is a good thing to do. Um, journalists are, are starting to latch on to that because it seems controversial because it's <laughs> counterintuitive to what most people believe. But it's about being able to say it in an interesting way. Um, and I'm not saying that I do that all of the time, by the way. Um, no? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> um, but that, that's the difficulty we've got, I think, in that some of our fundamental messages and not that exciting to, to the everyday person. And I think we need to make them exciting in ways that, that patients can receive well. This is interesting because, um, you know, when you highlight, um, we know that within the NHS, for example, that it's not just us as physios or it's not just doctors and nurses. And we know that there are other people that, uh, you know, make up this system, this, this structure. I feel selfish about that ash you know i feel like and i know i've had a conversation with uh, with jack about private medical insurance and how we've dealt with in that space and at the time when i had that conversation with jack somebody commented and said that they felt that physiotherapy had low self-esteem you know in terms of how we charged and, and insurance companies repeatedly knocking down the price right and, and bear with me as i make this point I feel like some of that has happened because we haven't been visible and because we haven't made our, our presence known, but also our value and contribution to society, that whether we work privately or not is definitely paramount to a lot of things. And for me, the pandemic has made physiotherapy flourish in so many ways because of that. So it's not to say that anybody's more important or less important, but I think that when you get that opportunity to shine, you should be taking it. And for, for me, from a physiotherapy point of view, I'm flowering. I want to blossom. I want that opportunity. And I want that opportunity, whether it's you in the BBC, um, whether it's Uzo or uh, Chris Marty, or um, we recently had a piece on the BBC News, um, somebody from the CSP Bain Network, I can't remember their name. I actually don't care who it is in terms of as long as they've, they've got the right message and that cohesion is there, I think that this is the time when we get the opportunity to shine, you know? You don't go onto a train and see an advert for a physiotherapist or stand at a bus stop and see an advert for a physiotherapist. And we still have, as, as uh, I know Lucy explored yesterday in a sort of sexism type of thing, but, but the fact where the notion for a physio is that, you know, running onto a football pitch with a sponge and a bucket of water, you know? So to me, in order for us to change these narratives, we need to be seen, you know? And even if that then means that the general public is then challenging, you know, what we do, how we do it, I think that that is fine. Um, some, some kind of ability for me is better than none. And if it's negative to start with, let's say it is negative, you are then in a position to check to influence that and change it. You know, I do think that there's the the scope for us within our our profession to to, to do that. But I, I will get off my soapbox a little bit about that. But but that point for me is fundamental. We haven't had that platform before. 
Yeah. Okay, yeah, okay. no, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And, and like you say, the, I apologize if you can hear my dog barking as well. Um, mm -hmm. The, <laughs> the um, I, I totally agree. We need the platform. And, and as, as damaging as COVID has been, and as much as I'd wished it would never have happened, um, you know, it, it does provide an opportunity for the public to understand physiotherapy in context outside of um, you know, running onto a football pitch or a rugby pitch with a, with a magic sponge. Uh, and, and I used to do that. So I'm not being disparaging to those sports physios that do that. You know, I used to work in, in, in sport and it's, it's an important part of the profession. Um, but it's not the only part of the profession and we need to work to try and change that perception that there's lots of different areas of physiotherapy. Um, and, and that's a future workforce thing as well. You know, we want to inspire a generation of, of, of kids to be physios. You know, I'm not, I'm not sure my kids would understand what a physio was if I wasn't one, um, you know, and, and, and that's important, but they all know what a doctor and a nurse is. Um, so I think you're absolutely right that, that that visibility is fundamental. And again, that's about having the right people in the positions in the media. Like you say, you know, you're not bothered who who goes for those things. And I think, you know, if, if physios or healthcare professionals are getting into the media for self-promotion or or to 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 further their own career then for me that that's when they might start saying things that that just to please the media or just to get a story or just to get, just to get exposure for, for them as an individual um and I, and I think we should avoid that where possible you know we want people involved who are passionate about health public health and messaging passionate, passionate about yeah. evidence-based medicine um and and making sure that people get the right information when they need it you know do we always get it right? Absolutely not. No, um, no, no. Um, but you know, it, it's important that we we try and do that. And like you say, it's about the people that are involved being the right people as well. And and this is this is really you know you touched on a, a really fundamental point for me here. You spoke about you know if people are doing it you know for their own self if you like, and then that message they're almost changing their opinion or their viewpoint because of they want that publicity. So. There are a few things in there for me. Number one, we're not, most of the time, we're not paid to do these pieces. And, and more often than not, we're called at short notice. When I was on um, BBC News for Sky, it was like, you know, one o'clock, can you do it? One thirty, get my, get my afro out, good to go, yeah? Three, two, one. And it was like that. And we don't get, no, and it's true. And, and some of the time, I don't get to know that those things are visible until, one of my patients says, I've just seen you on Sky News, or I've just read a, a piece and your name's come up in the Times, and you didn't tell anyone you were going to do that. I'm like, man, they said it was potentially going to be aired or, or published at this point, but there was no no guarantee. So when we're not paid, m most of us. The other thing I will say about it is this. As clinicians who, and, and there may be people who want to dispute me on this, in the NHS, we don't have to go out and get our patients. We don't, yeah? Patients are referred to us. When you work privately and you have to go out and earn that bread and butter, the way that that looks is, is different, right? But what I would challenge to everyone, and this is in any line of work, is to consider that everything you do, you are technically building your personal brand so if you started at the bottom i was a physio assistant let's say everything you do decisions that you make within your career to move up to graduate to work in a team of people you know you're, you're now with a, a, a big national responsibility for the allied health professionals that you you work with doctors and nurses all of that defines your personal brand you know, so if you contribute to a piece, for example, it is a bit controversial. But if you're somebody who is loud, outspoken, rude and abrupt, all of these things are making up your personal brand. And I would challenge everyone, particularly because social media platforms are so visible now. You know, if you go to apply for a job, I can look you up on Facebook, I can look you up on LinkedIn, I can look you up on Twitter. And you might have a look on LinkedIn that looks like that. You know, a look on Twitter that looks like that, you know, all of these things have been put together then by potential in employers. But I think that when we then end up being in the, the public eye or, or being in a public face, public, you know, public face, 
we must remember that we are also defining some of our personal brand in terms of what we've said, who we've chosen to then publish with. And we must not be afraid to say no when we think that something doesn't work for us, when we don't think it's going to be positive, you know, because that also can be absolutely damaging to your, to your personal brand. So that's kind of some of the, what I got out of what you were talking about just then. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Yeah. And, 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 you know, I think you're absolutely right in that, you know, whatever we do, we, we are contributing towards our personal brand, whether we, whether we like it or not. But I think it, if, if that's not the prime intention, I think that's the, that's the important thing for me. You know, I'm, I'm not totally unaware that every time I do something on the media, it does contribute towards my personal brand, but that's not why I'm doing it. That's a consequence of it um, oh, yeah. rather than yeah. it, rather than it being the, the, the main reason for doing it. So I think that's that that's the that's the important thing I think for me is is the angle that you're you're coming from in those situations. Oh yeah, um, it's definitely, definitely like you say uh, by default. I, I think I agree with you. I just hopped over to the to the comment section. Uh, hi to Joe Turner. Joe Turner has been I don't know Joe, um, but I know she's coming on at some point this week. She's been a real uh, supporter of some of my work. So thank you, Joe. Thanks for joining us. Um, somebody says nice, they're a Facebook user. I think Jack mentioned yesterday that if you don't give us the permissions, we actually cannot, um, we can't say who you are, which is a shame really. Bernadette Johnson says, um, she says, playing devil's advocate, what sort of society would we have if there were no physios? What role does physio play in healthcare that good quality info on the internet can't? Any thoughts around that? She said she's playing uh, yeah, that, 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 that is a devil's advocate question, isn't it? Um, Two parts. Where, that. Yeah, so where to even start with that? So, yeah, I, I think um, that let's, so from a musculoskeletal point of view, if we take musculoskeletal conditions, because that's my lane, that's what, that's what I know, there are yep, certainly yep. a certain proportion, there are certainly a certain proportion of those conditions that can be self-managed and often um, probably never even get to physio because they might read something on the internet and, and self-manage sufficiently. It might be a physio, initial physio appointment that points them towards self-management and then they're able to do that. I do think we should do much more of that. And, and I think we do overcomplicate things and over-medicalize things sometimes and people stay in healthcare for much longer than they should. Um, mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that I don't value physiotherapy as a profession. You know, I think what sort of society we have if we don't have any physios or what role does it play? Um, I think there's a few things as a profession that we should be uh, hanging our hat on uh, and, and um, you know, really being advocates for in society. One is um, rehabilitation. We, we are the go-to experts for um, exercise therapy and rehabilitation, and we should be. Most people can't do that from the internet, you know, understanding exercise prescription as well as the psychology around exercise adherence um, is a really complicated thing, and I don't think everyone can do that on their own. Um, mm. And I think as as a profession, we should be and could be experts in that and driving that uh, and being the go-to people for that, which we should be. Um, the other thing which is, uh, uh, you know, very close to my heart is work. You know, I think physios uh, and uh, can, can play a really key role uh, particularly now with new FCP roles and us being in primary care a little bit more. Um, yeah. And certainly from a private practice point of view, we can be real advocates for facilitating people back to work. I think that adds massive value um, to society. Um, I, I think what sort of society would we live in if, if there were no physios? Um, I think there would be uh, a lot more people in a lot of pain, uh, a lot more people with less function. Um, and, and I think we do a brilliant job at facilitating those things for people. So, mm, mm, mm. Um, Thank yeah, I think, you. We've got a I think we've got a really important part to play in society. And, and we, we, can we be better? Absolutely. Um, should we stop doing it? Absolutely not. I, I, I love this, this question because actually, um, you know, when I was growing up, I didn't know I didn't know any physios. My gymnastics coach was trained to be an osteopath at the time. And when I think about the patients that I treat now, there's a lot of, you're welcome, Bernadette. Um, there are a lot of patients, you know, if I didn't know about it then, there would have been people who didn't know about it either, right? And what I, I would say about physios is that without realizing a lot of us are really good mindset coaches, 
you know, in terms of people's perception about pain, explaining people's pain to them. And that's not necessarily with an MSK bias at all. I'm talking about, you know, the, the, the painful arm post the stroke, um, the pain that might be associated with, you know, an amputation. Um, and, and physios, particularly within the NHS, are the ones who spend the time with the patients. It's valuable, cohesive time where we get to collaborate with our patients. We're not dictating most of the time. We're working alongside with yeah. that patient. Uh, and I, I think that there are a lot of clinicians that don't spend that time. And for me, without that in our society, I don't actually know who else would pick up that role. The nurses don't have that time. The doctors certainly don't. And certain other allied health professions already have additional responsibilities. Um, yeah. To answer the, sorry. Yeah, go on. <laughs> sorry. No, I was just going to say, yeah, I think you're absolutely right. And for me, you've hit the nail on the head there in that the, the, the primary function of physiotherapy in society is to return people back to function, whether that's from a whether that's a musculoskeletal point of view, respiratory, respiratory. neurological, yeah. um, you know, yeah. we're, we're, our primary function is, uh, our primary goal is to return people back to function and, and, and we're the people with the expertise to do that, whether that's exercise rehabilitation, um, you know, uh, looking at people's um, psychological well-being around a musculoskeletal condition, whether that's helping someone return to work, you know, there's, there's, signposting someone in an FCP clinic to make sure they're in front of the right person. There's lots of ways that we can do it, but our, our job is to facilitate people back to function in, in any way that we can. And, and the second part of Bernadette's question, which is why we haven't you know, drifted from it, in relation to what we're talking about today, physiotherapy in the public eye, the internet you know, is a wonderful thing in terms of being able to provide information about a host of different things. But the internet does not know you cannot see you and the and and the 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 value of somebody understanding your situation in its entirety or understanding the history of injuries and things that you've had before in terms of your medical health definitely definitely do matter you can have a beautiful piece of information on the internet that should relate to you but because you've got a neurological condition uh, a long-term condition this information does not relate to you. And then we've got the situation that when you do go to your physiotherapist, we now have to unpick some of that work before we can really get into the, the heart of our work. Well, any advice, um, Ash, for people who would like to do, because some people might want to do stuff that's more local to them in terms of um, social media publications. Have you got any advice to, to people who might be thinking about that in the future as we round up here? Yeah, I, I think just put yourself forward. You know, John Ryan and his team at the CSP are brilliant, but you don't have to go through the CSP. Um, I think if you're passionate about public health messaging, then there's lots of local newspapers you can get in touch with, local radio stations. You know, if there's any anything particularly topical that comes up that you think is relevant for physiotherapy, um, then then just try and get involved. Um, but I think it's important that you do it for the right reasons and, and, and are passionate about how you deliver the message as well as what the message is. Beautiful. I've absolutely loved having you on this show. And I, I think that this will be, um, this will probably be the first of many, even if it's just in terms of this topic, or possibly bringing you back, Ash, if you wanted to come back. I'm so passionate about this publication side of things for the profession, because I think that this, this ability really then shows potential, you know, up and coming physiotherapists and those who are thinking about it, that our, our value, our importance, are significant in the society today and I'm really you know I think that the consequence of that is really about building our our value both financially but also to, to the society justifying our means as maintaining the health of this profession which is something I'm so so passionate about so a massive thank you um, for joining us I hope that you keep doing some you know some great work and keep sharing it with us um, I have actually added a couple of links and um, some of them to the BBC for publications that you and I have done or you've done on your own or some that um, relate to physios and I hope that people will check them out but in the meantime thank you so much Ash take care look after yourself stay safe and uh, thank you thank you very much <laughs> that's all from me I'm running one minute over um, is that full-time management or did I just feel like I had so much to say? Um, 
I just can't thank you enough for joining me. I hope that when I come back on next month, the questions will just keep rolling in. I love getting your thoughts, your ideas, your opinions about what we're talking about. Really drives the passion for me. I'm Leanne Antoine. I am from Distinct Physiotherapy here as a guest host on Jack 2's Chewing It Over. I say I'm the Oprah Winfrey of Healthcare and I look forward to seeing you in four weeks time. Take care and wish you all the very, very best. Thank you.